In this video, I'll show how to set up email campaigns in MailWiz. Just like when I create subscriber lists, creating campaigns is done when logged in as a MailWiz customer. I can do this in two ways. My MailWiz is installed in a folder called Newsletter, so I can log in as the admin by going to my website slash newsletter slash backend. I'll open my dashboard, click on Customers, find myself listed, and click here to log in as the customer. Or I can go to my website slash newsletter slash customer. This is where I can find my subscriber lists, and I currently have two lists set up to receive email campaigns. The Campaigns menu is here. There are two types of campaigns you can send, regular and autoresponders. I'll start by demonstrating a regular campaign, and I'll show autoresponders a bit later. First, I'll click All Campaigns. The Create New button is how campaigns are started, and I can also set up groups for related email campaigns to make them easier to find. A regular email campaign is a one-time mailer that is sent to all subscribers on a list or on a segment of a list. I'll click Create New, then choose the regular type. Each campaign has four setup steps. Details, which is the current step, then setup, template, and confirmation. I'll demonstrate each step one by one. In the details step, I'll assign the campaign the name Summer Sale. As with all fields in MailWiz, I can click in the field to see a pop-up describing what the field is for. The type is regular, and I'll send this to my purchasers list. If I have segments within this list, I can specify that here. And to add the campaign to a group, I can click here. Now I'll click Save and Next to proceed to the Setup step. Once I start a campaign, as long as I save after each completed step, or partial step, I can always return later to finish setting up the campaign. If I click All Campaigns, or Regular Campaigns, my campaign is listed here and I can click its ID or name to pick up where I left off. Back in the setup step, these fields show the email sender name. These are the defaults from my customer setup, but I could change them. For example, this could be a company name, this could be a customer service at email. The to name field has many options. The default is email, which means the subscriber's email address will appear at the top of the email they receive. If I want everyone to see the same text, such as valued customer, I can enter that here. Or to make it more personalized, I can use tags. Clicking Available Tags brings up the list of tags I can use. In this example, the first three tags are the predefined tags already set up in MailWiz, email, first name, and last name. These two were set up when I created my lists. I could also use the name of the list, or random or remote content. And I can add more tags, which I'll show a bit later. To use each subscriber's full name, I'll set the to name field to contain F name space L name using copy and paste from the tags list. For the subject line, I can enter one line that all subscribers would see. Or I can enter text that includes a tag, such as this one that uses the list name tag. Or I can use random content, which is a nice way to avoid spam filters. If a large number of emails goes out with identical subject lines, those emails are more likely to be identified as spam. But sending out those same emails with a variety of subject lines helps prevent this. I'll copy and paste the random content tag. There are three choices of subjects, A, B, and C. I can replace each of these with a separate subject line, I also have access to a large menu of emojis I can use to embellish my subject line. This link toggles the emoji menu on and off. Next, we have several campaign options. Open tracking means that I can view statistics on how many emails from the campaign were opened and how many clicks were made from those emails. Other statistics, such as bounced emails, are tracked automatically. URL tracking means that I'll also be able to see which of the links in my campaign were clicked and how often. 
For both types of statistics, one set will be generated immediately after the campaign is sent. The second set is generated 24 hours after sending to give subscribers enough time to open, read, and click. Plain text email means that a separate email will be generated, which doesn't include formatting or graphics. This is useful for subscribers whose email clients don't support or don't enable HTML and can only render plain text. Plain text doesn't support links, and plain text emails don't get counted in tracking statistics. Here I can set a maximum number of emails that will go out, in case I'm working with limited systems. If I'm sending a campaign to less than my full subscriber list, I can also randomize the list so that I don't always start at the top of the list. I can view all campaign statistics here in MailWiz, but I can also have statistics sent via email, either to myself or, for example, to a colleague. This is handy for presenting campaign information to someone who doesn't have access to my MailWiz account. Finally, the pre-header of an email is meant to provide a short overview of what the email contains. This text appears in the subscriber's inbox before the email is actually opened, though the text doesn't appear anywhere in the actual email. I can enter something enticing such as, super secret sale for our best customers only. To see additional setup fields, I'll click show more options. These two options are for setting custom field values when a subscriber receives or opens a campaign email. These two options set what happens to the subscriber in terms of lists. Say for example, I want to visualize data on how many times a subscriber opens this campaign email. I can set the initial value for each subscriber as zero, then increase this value by one for each open. I need to add a custom field for this. So I'll open my lists in a separate tab and click the name of the list receiving this campaign. I'll click Custom Fields, scroll to the bottom, and add a new text field. I'll label this field Number of Opens, and this will be its tag. I'll leave it Not Required and set it to Hidden so subscribers won't see this field when they sign up for the list. Sort order I'll set to 10 so that this will appear at the end of custom field lists. The default value will be zero. I'll save changes. Back in my campaign setup, I'll refresh the page in order to see the new custom field. I'll scroll to Change Subscriber Custom Field Upon Campaign Open. I'll click the plus sign to add a condition. I'll choose the Number of Opens field. For all subscribers, this value starts out at zero, and I want to increase by one each time a subscriber opens the email. For the syntax, I'll click the info icon and I'll copy and paste the first one to increment the value. I'll paste in the tag and replace X with one. With this option set, once I get my statistics after the campaign is sent, I can easily sort the data to see how many subscribers didn't open. Those will still have zero for this field. This way I can see who opened once, twice, etc and I can then use this data to create a list segment. For example, for subscribers who didn't read this email, I could add them to a new list segment that will receive the email campaign a second time. I can add additional fields, such as for date and time. This option is similar, but the custom field is changed after the email is sent, not opened. As an example, say I have a number limit on subscribers who will get this email and I want to send the campaign again to all those who didn't receive it the first time. I could create a date custom field for here and use the date time field to mark subscribers who received the email. I could then create a new list segment for subscribers without a date or time and send the campaign to that segment at a later time. The actions options are for moving or copying subscribers to different lists. For example, I could create a new list for sales leads and I would add to this list everyone who opened this email campaign. So under Campaign Open, I would choose the Copy or Move option and choose the new list here. Now we can save and continue to the third step, Templates. It's possible to create email templates from within MailWiz, though the options here are rather basic. If I want to create a relatively simple email, I can toggle the template builder to see the default blocks provided by MailWiz. I can drag blocks from right to left, 
and edit them in the space on the left. For emails with more robust options and features, we recommend getting professionally developed templates from a site such as themeforest.net. To see some examples in ThemeForest, go to Marketing, Email Templates, to see hundreds of options in a variety of categories, such as newsletters or catalogs. Anything you purchase here can be downloaded as a zip file and imported into MailWiz. There are two ways to get email templates into MailWiz. As the MailWiz admin, while signed into the backend dashboard, I can create a gallery of templates that my customers can use to create their campaigns. This can be done under Email Templates, Gallery. There is one default template here, and I could click Upload Template to bring in more. Categories can be used to group together related templates. For example, I can create a category for newsletter templates and another for sale promotions. Back in my customer dashboard, if I go to Email Templates Gallery, I'll see all of the templates provided by the admin, which for now includes just this one. I can click Import to bring this into my own customer gallery, or I can go to Templates and click Create New to build my own within MailWiz or upload a template I've downloaded from elsewhere. Say I've purchased a template and downloaded its zip file. In my templates, I'll choose Upload Template, and I can click on this link to download a sample template, which can be used to see how the template file structure should be set up. I'll click Choose File and find the zip file I downloaded. Here is a template in the content section. If the template doesn't appear, click Toggle Template Builder. I can keep and edit the blocks I want, erase what I don't, and import graphics with these suggested sizes. All of the usual editing tools are available here, such as fonts, bullets, alignments, hyperlinks, tables, images, etc. Now when I click Template, both the default and the new template are available. I'll go back to editing my campaign and skip ahead to the template setup. If I click Change Select Template, the one I added to my template list is here but I can also upload a template directly into my campaign without adding it in advance to my list of templates. Say that this particular template hasn't been uploaded yet. I can still click Upload Template, which brings in this template just for this campaign, not into my overall template list. I'll keep Auto Plain Text set to Yes so that a plain version will be generated automatically in case it's needed. Up here, I have a message about two required tags not found in the content, one for unsubscribing and one for company address. Available tags are defined in the MailWiz system, and I can see them by clicking here. These two are listed as required, and these are the ones that cause the error message. There are two ways to fix this. I can edit the email content to contain these tags, or I can make these tags optional. To edit the content to include the tags, I'll scroll to the bottom where I have both the address and unsubscribe strings. For address, I can select and delete the placeholder address and replace it with the company full address tag, copying the same syntax. Unsubscribe is a link, and I can double click to edit it. I'll change link type to URL, the protocol to other, and enter the tag in the URL field. After I've made the changes I need, I'll click Save Template Changes. The error message should now be gone. If I don't want to make this change with each template I upload, I can make those two tags optional. This is done by logging into the back end of MailWiz. I'll go to Settings, Campaigns, and click Template Tags. Here are the two required tags, and I could change them from Required to Not Required. I'll leave the settings as is and return to my campaign setup. Another option below the template content is UTM tags. These optional tags are URL patterns that can be attached to links in your email, which enable Google Analytics to track where clicks came from. When the email looks ready, I can click Test Template to send a test email to myself or to others. When the email is ready to send, click Save and Next. The confirmation step is where I can see a summary of everything I've specified for the campaign, 
name, list, subjects, etc. I can return to any step if I need to make changes. At the top, I can set the date and time I want to send. If I want to send this campaign repeatedly, I can check Advanced Recurring. I can set how often the emails will go out, weekly, monthly, etc., and the type of frequency and time of day. Max Runs set the number of times the email will go out at the set frequency. A value of negative 1 means that the campaign will be sent indefinitely. When everything is all set, I can click Send Campaign, and the emails will go out to everyone on the selected lists at the specified time. The other type of campaign I can create is an autoresponder. I'll click Autoresponders here under Campaigns. Then I'll click Create New and set the type as Autoresponder. An autoresponder is similar to a regular campaign, but rather than send a blast of emails to a list all at once, each email is triggered individually by a subscriber's actions. As an example, Say I want to send subscribers 10 tips on a particular topic, each spaced one week apart. I can set up 10 autoresponders, each including one of my tips, and set the frequency at one week. Or as another example, I can set an autoresponder to go out after each time a subscriber opens an email from another campaign. In this example, if I send out a campaign about a sale and a subscriber has opened that email, I can create a follow-up autoresponder to be sent a day or two later. I'll name this autoresponder Weekly Tip. I'll choose the same list as before, then proceed to the next step. The options on the Campaign Setup page are the same that we saw for regular campaigns. I'll enter a single subject, Tip of the Week, leave the other options as their defaults, and proceed. The template definition is the same for regular campaigns as well. The Campaign Confirmation step is where autoresponders differ from regular campaigns. The Activate At time sets the point after which the campaign will be active. The autoresponder event is either after a subscriber joins the list or after the subscriber opens an email from another campaign. If I choose this option, I can then choose which other campaign email acts as the trigger for this autoresponder. Time value is how long MailWiz will wait after the trigger before sending the autoresponder email. A value of 0 means the autoresponder will go out immediately. Or I can change this to 1 and the time unit to week for a one week delay after the trigger. I can also set a time before which the autoresponder won't go out. These two fields control whether the autoresponder will be sent to imported or current subscribers. I can click Save and Activate when the autoresponder is ready to go. In the next video, we'll look at sending campaigns and checking statistics.